This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. It's the feast of St. William the Abbot, born in Paris in the early 1100s. His uncle was a powerful abbot named Hugo, and William prayed hard, questioning what he should do with his life. He was a devout kid and particularly holy seminarian. But for whatever reason, his disposition angered several folks who spent a lot of energy trying to convince the bishop that William was a fraud. But the bishop could see his holiness, and the investigations came to nothing. And so these enemies, some of whom were seminarians, some lay people, some priests, made a play to have William transferred to another place. The bishop became concerned and wrote to the pope for advice. The Pope prayed and made the bold decision to move the priests and seminarians away instead and leave William put. William was ordained and promptly sent on a mission to Denmark with three of his close friends. The friends weren't there six months before they freaked out and returned to France. And so William was alone. He didn't speak Danish, and once again, he found himself surrounded by enemies, making patently absurd accusations about him. Now, modern people would say where there's smoke, there's fire. But investigation after investigation just proved that poor William was a magnet for enemies. He stuck it out, though, in Denmark, and after a few years, he converted the city he was assigned to. From there, he retired to a monastery where he was elected abbot, and strangely, he was freed of his constant accusers. He died in 1153, and of course he remains a patron of the falsely accused. Today is the publication date of The Diary of a Young Girl, written by Anne Frank. She was a Dutch Jew hiding with her family during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. Sadly, the family was found and sent to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in northern Germany, where Anne died. Her diary, though, is a touching and tragic tale of the circumstances and the inner life of so many people living under fascist socialism. Today is also the publication date of one of the greatest progressive rock albums of all time, Purple Rain by Prince. It was the sixth album for Prince Rogers Nelson and the first to feature his band The Revolution. It was actually a soundtrack, but through composed by Prince. Too often people dismiss the album and the performer as a stage show guy whose music is just pop nonsense. But music theory folks will stop and take notice. Prince was a virtuoso guitarist and a composer. Surely some of his songs are forgettable bubblegum pop, But some of his musical choices and instrumentation stand out in an era of pop music which features some of the most talented musical minds of the last century. In particular, the guitar solos, the layered orchestration, they're masterclasses of the art. And Prince himself had a sense of musical timing and precision which is rarely appreciated in an artist who is so flamboyant on stage. Much like Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and Dave Matthews, Prince's guitar technique and musical instincts are easily missed by the genre of the music and the drug scene that so often surrounds it. But make no mistake, they're masters of their art. In the same vein, today is the birthday in 1860 of the French composer Gustave Charpentier, whose Tadeum you've heard in about a third of the weddings you've attended. Chapentier was born in the northeastern part of France and was poor. He managed to connect with a benefactor who recognized his talent and got him into a conservatory in Lille and then in 1881 into the Paris Conservatory. He thrived in Paris and never looked back. He composed short and long pieces, songs, chamber orchestra, full orchestra. He wrote operas, including Louise, which remains his most famous work. He lived to the unbelievable age of 96 and is remembered as one of the great modern composers of all time. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.